in this demo, we will go through a five step steps planning process um, that are composed of a first step, which is called consolidation of operational data, that in itself has um, four steps, basically. So we will start by doing the demand planning by the store manager, then demand planning by the brand manager, and then by the marketing manager. And everyone will have their own opinions about the planning, and we will end in what we call consolidation of operational data um, in a version called consensus. Then, and this is all about phase one, consolidation of operational data. In step in phase two or step two of our planning process, we have the update quarterly forecasts. So uh, the idea here is to basically um, we are uh, in the month of September 2016, <clears throat> and we have to update the forecast until the end of the year for the four remaining months. Then we have a third process, which is to create the budget for 2017. The fo a fourth process which is to create a um, two to five year plan. And a fifth process that we don't show here, but it will be about monitoring key, uh, uh, key figures or, or key KPIs um, and um, seeing how the company is performing against them. We will do that after. So let's start from the beginning. <clears throat> the first step is to basically get a consolidation approach or consolidation of operational data. So, um, and what we have built is um, a four-step approach, like I said. The first, the first step is to enable um, the store managers to do their forecasts. So what they were going to do is basically each store manager will have access to a planning view of their own store and will um, basically do the planning for the six months going forward. So let's do that. So if I open the demand planning of this specific store, I have a number of artifacts that enables me as a store manager to plan, to plan. And I will enter into the first one. So this first template, um, I have a, a lot of other templates that enable me to do the planning, but this first template will enable me to, to plan uh, first in terms of quantities. So let's read the template. So this is a template for planning quantities, demand planning, for my specific store, <clears throat> for um, a product line. So this is all the products <clears throat> for the version store manager, which is my version. <clears throat> And for um, the month of September 2016, uh, plus six months. So on the report, I have actual data, um, historical actual data, and forecasting uh, data for the future. So <clears throat> let's read one example. So uh, I can see here that for... Um, this template is showing me that this product uh, had this sales in terms of actuals. <clears throat> um, this uh, this is the the forecasting line, the statistical forecasting line that the BPC is also giving me. So historical statistical forecasting and um, predictive forecasting. Going forward, if everything remains the same, what will be the, the expected quantities for the, uh, this product? So BPC is giving me as a store manager this information, which is good. And uh, I also see my previous forecast and my forecast accuracy, actually, right? So I can see that at, in this product, I was really accurate. So uh, the actual were 16, and I actually planned 16. And uh, okay, but uh, in other products, it's not like that. For example, this ones, um, I planned 
um, in the past 39 and actually I sold 52. So <clears throat> actually these red numbers all um, um, start to be red when um, the estimate of the store manager versus the actual have a difference that it's bigger than uh, 5% up or down. So basically this is a alert kind of situation that enables me to see how accurate I am as a store manager in my predictions in the past so that I can read from that and project better for the future. Okay, so um, and, ba and basically this is it. So I have for every um, item information about the actual quantity sold the statistical forecast made by the system based on if everything remains the same, what will be the profile of products that the, the profile of the, of the selling that we are going to do product by product, and um, my historical forecast and the accuracy I, I've been doing. Also, um, something that is very interesting is that I'm able, I'm able to see this information in a graph. So if I just click this plus sign here, I will receive um, the possibility to plot whatever combination of, of things that I, that I want. For example, here I'm plotting um, only three lines, three, one product, but the in light gray the actuals of the actuals of this product, in the dark gray the the statistical values um, that BPC is giving me. For, for the same product and the, in the line I'm seeing my particular forecast uh, that I did on the past. So this is a good form to start thinking about what quantities should I sell and to give my opinion as a store manager what I think I'm going to sell. So how do we um, how do we start to, to, to enter data? Basically I can start enter data directly manually so going item by item for example I'm, I'm putting here 20 and i'm putting 20 all all the way and then i save data right and um <clears throat> and that's it basically one one of the ways of of, of of doing that i can go product by product and um to do that um also, in terms of charting, um, I'm, I'm here just selecting one product, but I actually can compare the actuals of this product with the actuals of the other product and with the actuals of the other product, for example. This could be, I don't know, could be interesting just to just to see. Or mixing actuals with forecasts from different products, whatever, right? This is a very nice charting feature that this form has. So, first example is a manual planning. Another way to do planning is could be something like, okay, so I want to do, I need to do the store manager planning, but I want to have like a baseline. I don't want to start from 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 zero in all items. So what I can do is ask the system to copy the statistical uh, forecast produced by the BPC system to my store manager just to have a baseline. So I can do that by selecting this copy statistical to store manager. So I just click this, I do next and finish. And uh, basically I refresh the, the, the form. What I will see is basically that um, I copied the statistical, um, the statistical prediction to the store manager forecast, okay, as, as, a, as a reference. Another way to, to do it, to do this, and I, I can close this if I want. <clears throat> Another way to do this is to, to do the planning of the future is to use the, um, what we call top-down planning. So, and for, to do that, instead of going one by one, I can select the, this whole family of products because these products are all related to a family of products. And instead of going one by one, I can select and say that I want to, for this family of products, I want to sell like 5,000 units. And, and then ask the system to distribute these 5,000 units based on the, on, the, on the quantity sold of the same month but last year. So and we have this mechanism here that helps us to do that. So a mechanism and a form, basically. So 
I can change to this form. Maybe we'll refresh. What I see in here is basically the, the forecast that I already done on the, on the other one, right? Uh, that was done by copying the statistical values to here, to the store manager version. And I can do this, the, what, what I was saying before. So let's say that I want to do top-down planning. I want to say like 5,000. I want to to the fam this family of products. I want to say that I will be selling 5,000 every single month. And I want to distribute this amount based on the sales done in September, but of 2016. Uh, to use that that allocation method at allocation proportion proportion so i'm going to save this 5000 every month and then i'm going to run a package that will do this calculation that i was mentioning so if i run top down allocation to product items i do finish okay and um, let's see if the package is already completed it it is completed successfully. It's just a matter of seconds. What I'm going to do next is basically see the report again. And then when I refresh the 5,000 from this line, which is the, the value, the input value at the family level will disappear. And we will see that this line, which, which represents the totals of all the items will get the 5,000 because it's aggregating all the, the, the sons, all the children, right? So let's refresh. Let's do that. And here we go. We get the 5,000 um, the 5,000 um, quantities distributed based on last year values. And uh, if I want to, okay, just it was just an idea. If I want to go back again to the statistical to the store manager to have also only the statistical uh, prediction, in the planning, I can again go this way and go finish and go to the report, top down planning. And if I refresh, I'll get again the same values that I had previously. So I can do a lot of simulations um, with this. I can go again to the planning. I go um, one way or the other and so that I can try to define what will be the optimal quantities going forward. Okay, so we have just talking about quantities, but to make my decision as a store manager, I need to make another level of compromise with my managers. So it's not just about quantities, it's also about revenues and also about cost of sales and also about gross margin. So I have a report here that's called contribution margin that enables me to see um, that, the, the, the financial impact of the decisions of quantities that I was um, doing. So I can see this report, you see that this store manager version, I can see this report by individual, by individual product. For example, this, I'm just seeing one product and I see the quantities. This was the first one on, on the last report. I see the quantities that I expect to sell, <clears throat> the unit price, uh, and the system is giving me the unit price because it's bringing this from the RP. Um, the gross sales, I see the discounts that are agreed on average. I see the net sales, cost of sales, cost of sales by units, my gross margin. So basically I have like a, a P&L by, by product, right? <clears throat> but if I change the hierarchy, so if I go here, and I change from product to actually the line to actually the, the family line of, of products that I'm that I'm forecasting. It aggregates and basically gives the um, consolidated uh, PNL of my store for this family of products. So, okay. So on the first forms, I was I, I tried to identify quantities. Now I'm seeing the um, the imp financial impact of, of the values of quantities that I've, that I've inputted previously, right? Okay. So, okay. Um, this is basically um, the consolidation, the consolidated view of the family of products that I've been planning previously and the impact of financial impact of that, right? 
again. So this is the compromise basically that I'm assuming to my superiors, right? That I can deliver. Um, and you may ask, so how, how do I know this? How do I, how, how can I translate the quantities in financial impact? Basically, we can do this because we are collecting from the ERP system the price conditions, so the price list, the standard costs, the discounts, and basically we are producing and, and doing these calculations so that it's not only about quantities but also about the financial Im impact of that. And, and, and we need to make sometimes trade-offs between the two, right? <clears throat> I can even see that if I just click on this, for example, I can see the price list. This is a simplification, of course. Every product is the same price. And this is the forecasted price going forward on the price conditions that we have on the RP. These are the discounts that are with, that we collect from the RP. And we have on our model, we have four times of four types of discounts, commercial, promotion, campaigns, and contracts. Um, and, and, and that's it, basically. I can see in this report the compromise that I'm doing um, in terms of rolling forecast for my, my store as a store manager. I can also see others, other things. Remember that when we opened this report previously, we, we mentioned more than one time that we uh, get uh, this line, which is the statistical forecast that PPC is, is giving me. Basically, what, what it says is that if everything remains the same for this product, based on, on the historical values and trends, seasonality and, and base assumptions, um, this is the expected s sales. So this is built and this is delivered by PPC using um, a statistical model. And we can access that on this form, statistical forecast. So if I go into here, and this is basically just for information purposes for the store manager, right? Uh, you can see that for a specific product, the first one, the shirt Shavna Air Sabuk, the first one, um, it, basically the model is very robust. So I have I have um, a very robust a very robust model. Why? Because if you if you notice the there is here two lines. One is a blue line that represents the actuals. So we have actuals from 2014 January until 2016 um, month eight. And, and this is the profile of the line. And <clears throat> we have a line just above it, basically, that it's able to be to fit to fit the blue line it's it's an orange line that basically uh, makes a regression against the the actuals and can actually predict the past right and based on the the accuracy of the past predict the future so going forward this is the prediction and this is the line there actually i'm seeing in here right this line 18 17 18 19 20 is basically this one right um, this one okay <clears throat> and how how is this done basically bpc leverages um, uh, a common tool that everyone has on excel called the solver and basically we do two things we pick up what bpc is very good which is the management and modeling of data right we we keep we, we have data in, in the database we pick it up we model it we send it back in a secure way and we get a, an advantage called something that uh, Excel has called the solver, which is this stuff here. It's this the solver. The solver basically does a regression analysis and and, and do a maximization on minimization of, of of an objective function. And um, the model is like this. I I give to the model basically the actuals. And again, this is not on the Excel. This is coming from the the, the, the database on BPC, right? Quantity sold. <clears throat> then I make an assumption about what is the my perspective. What is the the equation that better represents the selling profile of this specific product? And here I'm assuming that 
the selling of a product uh, is as this kind of equation. It has a base value. So normally I sell this amount. Um, it has a trend. So normally the trend should be uh, positive or negative. So I'm, I'm selling more of this product or less of this product. So, and then um, I have seasonality. So in specific months, I, solve, I sell more or less uh, on, of the year. So if in January, I sell more than in February. So there, there is a seasonality. So I build this equation. And after I build this equation, I, I'm, now I'm explaining how the model X is actually built. I build this equation, I get the actuals. Uh, and I get like, uh, in our example, I'm getting 24, 24 sample uh, values. So from 2014, January until, until 2015, 12. So I have 24 and I will build my model based on 24 um, sample values. So <clears throat> I get the actuals. Then I create an equation that in my perspective represents, should represent how the product is, is sold. Then I create a new column called the error. It, basically, what is the error? Is the subtraction of the actual minus the, the minus the equation. So the error, right? The error. And then I have the same thing, which is the error, but squared, because I need to square the error, so that uh, um, the negative effects are not um, are not um, opposed to the positive effects. So okay, I have need to square it, and then. Basically, I ask the solver to identify me what are identify me the base, the trend, and the seasonality. The solver will identify this, and I will and I will run the solver to identify what are the base, the trend, and the seasonality by doing the by doing the minimization of the sum of squares. Basically, this is a regression model. So, and the solver, if you, if we see here, has identified these values. Base, this is the base, this is the trend, so it's upwards, and these are the seasonality, right? And the seasonality should sum zero, should be, the sum should be zero. So, you see the line, the orange line, if I delete the, basically the model, right? The line will be flat. So, basically, this is the, the, the intelligence of, of the thing. But again, this is not on Excel, this is saved on the database. If I refresh it, it will come up again. Let's see how this actually works in practice. So if, if for example, if I'm nothing in here, I just have actuals, and uh, so the, my equation is zero, so I cannot ex explain nothing, right? Because the trend is zero, the baseline is zero, the senality is zero. My error is 100%, and my squared error is basically very big, so I cannot explain anything. So if I run the solver, if I go to data, I run the solver and, and I'm saying on the solver, and sorry for this, the, it's not on English. If I run the solver, basically I'm going to say, what is my target? I want to minimize, this is minimize. I want to minimize the sum of squares. And this is summing the squares, the 25, uh, by changing the base, the trend, and the seasonality this is something that solver will identify. And my constraint is that I want that the sum of the seasonality is equal to zero. So let's run, run the solver, and it immediately tries to identify, it will do an iteration. There will be 10 iterations, and it will try to identify what's the base, what's the trend, and what's the seasonality. This will take up around five minutes, because you will do 10 iterations, to, to identify the best fit. So in a couple of seconds, we will start to see the line, the orange line, move up and down, and adjust, trying to adjust to the blue line. Let's, let's try to, to see that happening. <clears throat> and um, OK, it started. So it started to, the, to trying to identify a base a base value and a trend. So no no uh, up or down, just first a tentative to identify a base and a trend. 
and now it's starting to identify seasonality. So we will start to see the, this be becoming a curve and not and not a straight line, just in a couple of seconds. And by the way, the solver is an add-on to Excel that everyone has. I would, I would normally say that uh, we could have very good um, statistical forecasting solutions, but um, I think we, we need to know how to how to um, walk before we run. And this is re really trying to not not putting statistic as a black box, but basically showing how everything is calculated, which is I think is nice. Because after people understand how actually the statistic works, we can more easily go through more advanced um, statistical software solutions. If, if I, at least this is my perspective. So as you see, it starts to try to figure out what's the best values, and he's trying to adjust the base, the trend, and the seasonality. Okay, and uh, you can see down down here that we are in iteration three. We will go until the 10. So, uh, and you will try to, to produce the best, um, the best coefficient possible and the, the, the best reduction, the sum of squares, the, min, the minimize the sum of squares. So it, we are almost there, as you're seeing, right? And we are in iteration three. So we will we'll have a lot of them. I'm going to pause the video for a second. So um, the solver is, is finished. It took a little bit more than six minutes, something like that. Now I can accept the, the solution. And um, and that's it. What I, what I need to do uh, then is basically to save the data. And while I'm saving the data, I will be saving the um, I will be saving the, the the forecast made and actually the model that that you see in here, right? <clears throat> so I've saved all these values here, and I also saved um, the the forecast. So if I go here, you can easily see that I am able to produce a forecast going forward. So this is an easy way to actually have statistical dynamics in in the, in Excel and BPC, taking advantage the advantage of the, the the two solutions. And use and solver, which is a very very robust um, add-on in Excel and it's free, by the way. So. The store manager is not supposed to do this. This is just for information purposes, and we just uh, detail this just to show you how powerful this could be. And actually, you already have this on your systems. What the store manager can also do is to go to the to go to other form, which is the comparison scenarios, and create more scenarios. So, what I mean is, the store manager has by default a version with his name called the, the store manager version, right? <clears throat> but he, and it's actually the, the, the version that is published, the official version of the store manager. But before he, he, he does he, he, he do that, he can create scenarios. So and we created the form that helps him do that. So we can go to here to the comparison scenarios and this is the current version that he has produced. This is uh, these are other versions that other managers are be are producing. Um, uh, and actually, this is the actual, and this is the forecast. And before I be, I I turn this before I turn this version as public as official, I actually can copy all the values to, let's say baseline one, and I can do that using this. I can copy all the values that are calculated in the store manager version and save them in baseline one. So if I refresh the report, I will see that 
I will copy all the values to base I want so they are saved. And again, change the go go back to the demand planning and the top down planning, change the values and create a new a new strategy and a new assumption in terms of revenues and costs. And if I want again save that to baseline two. So and after a number of iterations, I can decide what, what is the official one and publish that again to, to the star manager. By the way, I can always uh, plot all the lines that I have in graphs. All the templates have graphical uh, features um, in, uh, at, the, um, at the top, right? So, okay, let's go back to the contribution margin. And um, basically this is it. So as a store manager for this store, I'm okay with the gross margin that I'm um, compromising to deliver for the next uh, six months in terms of a rolling forecast approach. By the way, this process can be run um, almost every month. So we can have like every month approach of reviewing the forecast, right? And creating a consensus approach. But okay, I've done my work, I can close all the reports, I don't have to save anything because this, the data is already saved in, in the database. <clears throat> and I can do my work as completed. And so the different store managers will do the planning for their different stores, right? <clears throat> At the same time, the brand manager responsible for a specific brand, for example, the American Eagle Outfitters, has the ability also to create its own its own version of planning, right? So, and he can do that store by store also. It doesn't need to do store by store. It doesn't need to do all the stores. It just can pick up one or two, or you can pick up whatever you want. So, but he has also the ability to do the, its own planning independently of the store manager. So, and let, let's see one example. If the, the brand manager co goes into this, um, to this store, he will have actually the same thing as the store manager. He has the same ability, but there is a, a nuance. And we will see that. So this report, the demand planning report will open and we, and we will confirm that now we are not talking about creating a store manager version, but we are talking about creating a brand manager version. So in this, okay, so I will, he will be um, populating this, this yellow uh, lines here with um, amounts and also analyzing uh, his accuracy in terms of forecast. Basically, you can do the same exercise as, as we saw previously with with the the, the, the star managers. So every, every single thing, this, the same thing. Okay. Let's say that he has um, completed his work. Uh, and by the way, he also has because the, the form is the same. Basically, what we what we change dynamically is the version that is expected to be filled in this. Uh, process activity, right? So, okay, let's say that the brand manager has done his work. He has selected a number of stores that you want specifically to plan in detail. Others he doesn't want it to plan um, because it doesn't need to, because the store manager will do that for him. And um, and that's it, basically. So we have the sub-step store manager, the sub-step brand manager, and we also have the demand planning from the marketing manager. So we are giving in this um, example the, the possibility for the marketing manager also to plan independently um, its uh, a, a planning version. So uh, again, he can go in and select specific stores where he, where he thinks he wants to do some kind of promotions or something. And um, by the way, he, he, and, and he, he can basically go in and we just going to confirm that the form and the artifacts that will enable him to plan are basically the same. So we did this assumption. It could be, they could be different, but we assume that they are the same. But now the planning version will be the, the marketing, um, the marketing manager version, right? Here. <clears throat> and he, 
But one of the big differences in here is that the marketing manager actually will not need to plan every month. For sure, you will not need to plan every store, but it doesn't need to plan every month. Basically, he will try to pick up, in this example, everything is, is filled in, but in reality, he will not be filling in every month and every in every item. He will be selecting, um, cherry-picking, items where you think he will do like promotions and things will sell more in specific months and in specific products so so he has the ability to do that right to give his own opinion and again he has all the artifacts to do the same as the other ones so let's say that we have done he has done uh, the work he closes he marks it completed he marks it completed as a way to show progress on, on the on the process monitor, right? We we can also, by the way, we can the, the user that is actually responsible for the, the the process, and we are, for example, in the in the marketing process. He can see the progress of all the tasks that are open and who is going to be the performer and if they are open or closed or whatever, right? You can see the progress. Zero completed, 31 in process, zero pending, right? Pending is because they could be reviewed or something, right? So this just was um, just to show that. Let's go back to, to, to my activities. So marketing manager has done his work. Everything is okay. And now... Um, we are going to to go to uh, a new a new um, step sub step which is consolidation of operational data consensus basically is just to summarize everyone has the ability to give their opinion and now we have to we have to go to a number of uh, we have a process that enables more easily to people to create um, a single version of the truth, right? So, and we call this consolidation of operational data consensus, right? And we have a consensus by store. So let's uh, begin and go through one store. Uh, the, um, the American Eagle features First Avenue. So the first form that we see is the consensus form. So if I open the consensus form, it's a form to plan quantities, but it's a little bit different from the previous ones that we saw. Let's open it. And what we see is the following. So consensus quantity demand planning for a specific store, for a, a line of products, the version is the consensus for the next six months, right? And we see item by item, we see the, the previous consensus, the accuracy of the previous consensus uh, versus the actual, the, 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 the statistical uh, estimate, the store manager estimate, and um, the brand manager and the marketing manager for the specific item. So the idea is that we will um, decide what is the consensus. So who is right in each item and by month, right? We can start by saying that okay, I don't, um, I want to, I don't want to start the, in, in, in the blank, in the blank approach. I want to have like a baseline. So the baseline could be something like let's copy, let's give the, the let's say let's give the store manager like a, an, um, the opportunity to be like the benchmark. So if the idea is to I want to copy the, the store manager forecast of all the items to the consensus. And then this this becomes our baseline and then we, ch we change our baseline. So let's do that. So to do that, I just select this one, choose next, choose finish. Let's see, the package is running. It's already completed, it's very fast. So if I go to the consensus and I refresh the report, <clears throat> okay, so I've, transferred all the store manager forecasts to the consensus. So I have my baseline, yeah? 
more things that I think that are interesting to see. Um, you see these uh, red numbers picking up? These red numbers are picking up because of this thing here. Highlight varices to consensus higher than 25. What, it, what this means is that if I write here 25 and something lights up, it means that the, the number of the plan or the number of the planning version is at least higher than it's at least higher is 25 is more than 25 percent higher than higher or lower i mean than the value that it's uh, put on the consensus right for example if i put five i will i will try to find five percent variances more values will will, uh, will appear of course right so for example 44 44 is more than five percent lower than 57 Okay, so you get the idea. So it's something that enables me to see after I put the consensus, uh, after I put the consensus, how distant is the consensus from from the different estimates? And it's like an alert and enables me to more seriously adjust the consensus version. Again, I have the ability to plot whatever combination of product version um, thing in the chart to enable me to plan more uh, accurately okay so <clears throat> the consens in the consensus version which is supposed to be like a coordinated meeting where everyone has the ability to to say why they why they want to sell this amount in this item in this month and to define what is the actually the official consensus version um, I can all, I can have a, a, a number of artifacts that help me to do that. So and the artifacts that I've, we've put here are basically the same as in the, the other planning versions. So I can do the demand planning templates where I see the where I see the actuals, the statistical, the consensus. I can do top-down planning uh, where I define. Where I'll be working in the consensus and I define the target value and ask it to distribute the target value based on the actuals of previous of, of uh, the same month but previous years. Um, I can see the translation of the quantities of the consensus versions in terms of financials, in terms of revenues, in terms of discounts, in terms of net sales, cost of sales, gross margins. I can see the price lists, discounts. I can see the statistical forecast just to understand um, really the um, how is the the predictive model uh, delivering the, the the values that is delivering. And again, I can create scenarios of consensus and then define um, a, a final one. Right? If I could go here, I can. I see the consensus and I can copy the consensus to the different um, baselines, right? The ones that I can write into, not because I, do, I cannot write on all of them. I can just write on the ones that I have rights to write, okay? So let's go back and do our work as completed. So we are okay with the quantities that we have uh, said that we were going to, to, to sell on the next six months on this rolling forecast approach. Uh, and consolidating the data um, and this is the gross margin for a specific product but I can again go to the hierarchy of products and um, select the family of products that I'm forecasting for this store <coughs> and see the consensus so this is the gross margin that I am compromising to deliver again we are always consolidating data at the, the the at every level, let just let's remember that our group of of of, of stores is something like this. We have our group total, then we have our different business units, right? And then inside the, the business unit, we have the different brands, and inside the brands, we have the different stores. So every time I run a report, if I instead of running a report. At the, at the detail level at the store, if I run it against the brands, I will be aggregating the results of every store in this brand. If I run it, the report against the unit, I will get the consolidated values of the business unit. If I run it 
in the global group I will get the concentrated values of the whole group okay and this is really really uh, a very awesome thing okay so let's say that our step one of our planning workflow which is consolidation of operational data is complete I'm going to close my reports everything is closed I don't need to save anything because the data is already saved into the system. I do the thing as completed. I can put comments even. And um, and that's it. The step one, consideration operational data, which is comp composed of four processes or four steps, is done. Our next process is the second one, which is update quarterly forecast. So in this step, we <clears throat> go beyond the quantities and revenues in contribution margin detailed by product or by item and easily consolidated by family of products we go a step further we go to the PL balance sheet and cash flow approach <clears throat> and specifically on this example which could be run or could could be delivered by the brand manager that that besides having responsibilities over um, the quantities to be sold on the, of the specific brand it also has financial responsibilities and should be able to deliver, for example, if that's the case, a uh, consolidated PL balance sheet and cash flow uh, estimate, at least a simplified one. Putting in assumptions um, and seeing the consequences. Okay, so let's do that. So let's imagine that we will be on this process, the second one update quarterly forecast and uh, we will do the update for the quarterly forecast to the first store the American Eagle First Avenue so I, if I go in and I see <coughs> a number of artifacts again to help me plan my PL balance sheet and forecast right so <coughs> let's say then uh, I will start in the first one I will start in the first one and um, I will see the basically the first one is the PL. So let's read this uh, report. This is the profit and loss of a specific store, <coughs> the forecast version for 2016. What I have from January to the month 8 is is uh, actuals and what the system is asking me to do or this process is asking me to do is to forecast the remaining four months of the year right and uh, this is the PL from 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 the retail in here I have absolute values so it goes from sales gross sales net margin contribution margin net profit and at, at the end of this I have like KPIs right that actually influences the PL. Very good. So, <clears throat> one of the th first things that I can do is I don't want again to start my reforecast um, or forecast of the remaining four years of the year in, in, in blank. I want to create like a baseline. And I want that, that, that this baseline is based on the on the step one basically the consensus version that was previously created that we were creating right so we created um, on step one so I, I want to bring that in so if how, how do I bring that in if I select this one and I do next and finish and okay it's executed and I refresh the report where I'll be uh, getting is basically the sales that I have uh, projected based on, on on the step one, the cost of sales, the direct cost of sales, and the promotional costs, the discount. So this is coming from the step one. What I'm being asking now is to <coughs> complete the remaining PL, complete the remaining balance sheet. I'm going to open the balance sheet. And again, the balance sheet has uh, actual values from January to uh, to month 8 and complete the remaining cash flow cash flow analysis right 
again I have the actuals then there is the remaining stuff which is the, the forecast right so let's go to the beginning to the PNL <clears throat> so in here we are again we can plot the data in the graphical mode so let's pick up sales let's pick up cost of sales um, other income so we can do that right and plot the data and help us to forecast a little bit better net profit so okay so net profit is like this and then goes up because i just put this values in and I'm, there are other costs that i need to go in so that this line of course after the after the remaining items are put in will go down right so <clears throat> and let's do that so i have two options two ways to complete this pnl that as we build it so i can put the values directly in here in terms of absolute values or i can put the values in terms of um, kpis related to the sales so let's give an example so let's say that the franchise royalty uh, let's say that it's ten thousand so let's say that's ten thousand right when i save what is going to happen is two things so the pnl of course i'm saving four values the the gross margin will uh, will reduce of course right because it's um, a cost but immediately i will see i will get the um, the franchise royalty percentage uh in uh, based on sales right relative to sales and after i see this i can see that this is actually very different from the, the past from the actual historical kpi values so basically what i can do is okay overwrite that and save the data when I do this, immediately the the the, the values are translated to the PNL and adjusted. So uh, instead of ten thousand now, I have fourteen, thirteen, twelve, and thirteen. You see, so basically I can put directly the values in the absolute values on the PNL, and I get the KPI. And if I don't like the KPI that I'm getting, I can change the KPI and the absolute value will adjust. So it's like a ping pong. Okay. Let's do the same for for the for for rebates, for example. Let's do that in here. If I do this, I say that's the same thing. And if I save the values automatically, I will get the KPI below. <clears throat> Right, and I have the KPI. I can compare the KPI with actually what is on the past, adjust what what I want to adjust, or let's say I'm more of a key figure planning kind of guy, so I basically just do something like this and something like uh, this, and I save the data. And my PNL will be adjusted. All the absolute values will appear. Okay, so I've saved 56 records. And if I don't like these values, I can basically just also do this and save the data. And my KPIs below will be adjusted to reflect the proportion against sales. So very dynamic way of, of, of planning in absolute values and in any relative values, making every time everything is in, in accordance. One of the things that I, that I didn't um, fill in is the uh, footfall buyer. So what is the expected quantity of people coming into the store? Let's say that I continue to assume this amount and based on the, on the value, based on, if I do this, um, he will end save, He's going to do the following. He will look up the sales that are forecasted and divide the sales by the quantities of average footfalls and give me the average transaction value. So the average transaction value um, is this one. And I compare. I can compare this one with the historical values. In, and, I, and if I don't like it, I can change the values. 
again, I can go here and put whatever value I want. But if I do this, I will for sure influence the sales values, which uh, if I do that will be different from the consensus that were produced in, in the previous step. It, they, it, it can be, so I, I can be in terms of forecast more optimistic more up in terms of work are more optimistic or, or more pessimistic than the actual consensus approach uh, so I, I can do that so that's that's okay <clears throat> so that's it so I've done the PL planning and um, now I have to go to the balance sheet and um, and do more things on the balance sheet on the balance sheet what he's asking me uh, to do is basically the, one of the first things that I have to fill in the KPIs of the balance sheet. So I have to say months in year, months, days in months, days of outstanding, days payables, inventories, planning property investment, equity, equity investment if it remains, if it reduces. So let's say that everything will remain the same. And after I save the data, a number of um, a number of items on the balance sheet will be completed, will be um, completed. So based on day sales outstanding, the country receivable will be adjusted. <clears throat> and based on the the trend that is going upward or downward, I see that I have an investment on a disinvestment. For example, from here to here, I see that I'm, I have less accounts receivable. So it means they have, I'm investing less. So in account receivable and again less less and less so this means basically that i'm receiving more money uh, i'm less man money investing in working capital um, let's see the the in terms of accounts payable um the opposite occurs so i'm, I'm paying faster and faster so i having less and less money in the accounts payable so basically these probably two will compensate each other and have like a zero effect on, on the balance sheet, on, on the cash. Um, but after I do this, I notice that my balance doesn't balance. And, and, and that's okay. So what I need to do, and the cash flow, it, it still remains solid. It doesn't change. It didn't change anything, right? Because uh, I didn't run the calculations yet, right? I just upload, up, just updated the, the figures, key figures. So what I need to do to to is to, to do the following is to run this package, run PL balance sheet and cash flow. And this package will actually do all the calculations necessary to deliver a solid balance sheet and PL. So this package is very fast to run, so it's like a couple of seconds. Now if I go to my balance sheet forecast and I refresh it. My balance will balance, so net balance sheet is equal to zero. And uh, I can see my historical trend in terms of cash, and it's good, it's, it's up and running, it's growing. It's accumulated cash, it's interesting, yes, because I have, this is like conspiracy, I have maintaining the investment that I that I have. I am If I'm maintaining the investment in account payable account receivable, and I'm continually delivering uh, net income, of course, my uh, other things remaining constant, my cash will uh, go up. If I see my cash flow, um, if I see my cash flow and I refresh it, it will also show the calculations, uh, the movements in cost, so the, the movement in working capital, I can see it here, the movement in working capital. Um, and um, I can see in the end, I can see the movements in cash and the accumulated movements in cash. So the sum of movements will actually give me this amount, right? Which is the accumulated cash. So, and after this, if I have more cash than I need, I can do applications, I can reduce equity, I can do a number of things. If I don't have that much that that much cash. I, I have to find ways to to um, to change the KPIs in order to get the values that I want. Every time I change one of these values, I have to run very fast these these things. Just click here, next, finish, 
and then if I refresh it, and then if I, oh, sorry, and then if I, that was on the cash flow, and then if I refresh it, it I'll show you what, what actually has, has, has changed. So, okay, this is the assumption. This is the assumption that the brand manager would be able to deliver and simulate a financial um, estimate of a specific store, of one of a specific store of stores of, of brands that deliver a specific brands, PL, balance sheet, and cash flow. And, and that's it. There are a number of other reports that uh, we can run to help him um, plan. Again, he's planning also in store by store, but it doesn't need to be that way. He can plan it in an aggregated level if he, if, he, if he likes, right? It's just an approach. Again, because we are always having the possibility as a brand manager to see all the stores that belong to him, right? And, and that's it. So he has done his job, so he can close it, close it, close it, close it. Market is completed, and that's it. Step two of our work process is completed. So, okay, let's go to the third process. And the third process in our planning workflow <clears throat> is the create one-year budget. So the idea is to create the budget for 2017. Um, and this, again, could be done by the brand manager where um, on the occasion that he will have also financial responsibilities over the, the individual stores. <clears throat> so um, let's do that. Let's pick up the example of the first one of the American Eagle Art Features, the first avenue. So create um, one year budget. So you will go in, you will again see a number of artifacts that will enable him to do the the planning of the budget. So you will enter the PL budget. And basically, what is the PL budget? The PL budget is um, basically pretty much the same as the, the as the way that we model the forecast budget, the forecast, um, um, the forecast. <clears throat> but now we are going to do the budget, and the budget uh, for 2017 will be um, something like uh, for every month. So we'll be, we will do this month by month for every month. And um, also we will do the, we'll need to do the balance sheet. Um, <clears throat> and we don't have anything in, right? And we also need to do the cash flow, right? So, um, Everything is ready, but uh, let's say that we don't want to start in, in, at the in the blank page. So we have something like um, something like the um, create the budget baseline. So and let's say that we want that the budget baseline for 2017 could be the forecast that we did previously in 2016. So the forecast of 2016 is comprised of actual values for the first eight months and uh, forecast values for the last four months. So let's let's pick that up as a starting point. If, and to do that, we just select this line. Let's go then and the finish. <clears throat> and we see the package is running. It's already run. It's very fast. If we go to the PNL and then we refresh, we will get the data in. So everything is already populated. Based on the based on the on, on last year. So now that I have the, um, a, a baseline for my for to, to build the budget, basically, um, I can start to do uh, exactly the modeling that I did in the same way in, in as in the forecast. So. Okay, I can review the values of sales, the values of forecasting directly in here, and I have the the consequence in terms of KPIs. Or if I change the KPIs, I will be changing the absolute amount on on the PNL. So I go backwards and forwards with this 
trying to come up with the budget that it suits me it suits the store that I'm that I'm planning okay <clears throat> Um, okay, and basically um, that's it. I could do the same thing in, in the balance sheet. So, because on the balance sheet, I already have um, the I already have a baseline, and the balance is, is being balanced because okay, it's it's based on last year's forecast. I can change the assumptions. <clears throat> To see the consequences and also the um, cash flow change the assumptions and see the impacts on, on the cash flow and um, again in all these reports i have um, i have visibility in in the charts approach so i can change the the plotting of what i want to see and to enable me to plan better <clears throat> uh, the same goes to the balance sheet so I have here the plotting of receivables payables and um, cash yes cash is, is growing because I have no extra investments going forward and I have revenue and net income so of course right <clears throat> and um, every time I do a, a change on the um, a change on the assumptions of the balance sheet, for example, I should be running this package. It's very easy to run. You, you, we do run next, next, and it reduces the calculation of the balance sheet, balancing the cash, the balance sheet, and delivering the um, adjusted cash flow and the cash balance. Okay, so basically this is the way to do the budget. And again, the budget is always being consolidated from the lowest level, which is the store level, to the highest level, which is the to the higher level, which is the brand, to the even higher level, which is the business unit, and to the group, basically, right? We are always consolidating everything uh, on the fly, which is which which is great, basically, and we can even drill down up and down. Okay, so uh, step three, which is the budget. It's it's done, so I can close my my forms. Don't have to save anything because it's already saved. <clears throat> I, have a, I have other reports that I have that can also help, help me plan better. We I did, we didn't saw them, but basically other reports showing the same thing in a different format or with with different perspective, so that I can plan better. So I do my activity as completed. I close it. And step three is done. So step four, which is to do the two uh, to five year plan. Basically is <clears throat> the year two uh, to five is the year um, 2018 until 2021. <clears throat> and, and in this uh, planning, again, this could be also the responsibility of a brand manager of different brand managers actually with with responsibility over financials and um, they could basically do it uh, store by store or brand by brand if you like but let, let's assume that th this is done store by store and um, if it makes sense basically like so what we have created for this process which is the fourth process is a number of activities <clears throat> and sub steps so let's open one and let's Pick up the the PL. And what what I will see is basically something that I'm used to seeing, but with the small adjustment. Let me just put this in here because it was a mistake. Okay, so what I see here is that it's basically this my PL. Right? What I already know about the PL. And also I see the balance sheet. And it, it opens on the 18th always. I just have a, a small bug here that I will correct. <clears throat> a bug is related to the way that the business process flow will open. 
but I, wouldn't, I did a mistake there, but anyway, it's very simple to correct. So I get the, um, the PNL, I get the balance sheet, and I get the cash flow. So, and uh, the corporation asked me to do a two to five year uh, plan. So the difference between this kind of planning and the, what we saw previously on the budget and on the forecast is that this kind of planning is done at the year level and not at the month level. But everything remains the same because it's the same kind of assumption. So uh, I will have the ability to create the baseline. And so, and I can do next, 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 and I will be creating a baseline for this values, this, this year's. And I will be seeing the actuals from 2015 and the actuals from 2016. <clears throat> uh, the actuals, I mean, actuals and forecast from 2016 and the um, budget for 2017 right, as, as um, references. And I'll be estimating the remaining four years. Right. So this is the, the budget from two to five years. And the exercise will be the same. I put, I can put total values and I have consequences in terms of KPIs. I can change KPIs and I adjust the absolute amount. So it's pretty much the same thing after I put in the assumptions of the balance of the profit and loss. I put the assumptions here of the balance sheet. What I do next is basically I run the package. I do next and it balances the balance and identifies what is the cash available year over year. And um, in terms of cash flow, what is the cash flow year over year? And I can make assumptions and decisions on, uh, on, on this. Um, let's say that um, we are not going to do this because it's the same thing. Let's say that I've done my, my work, I've done my job. So the high level planning in terms of years, I basically can close my forms, I can complete my work, and it's done for this store. And and that's it, basically. We will have a fifth process that, that's not yet um, built, but it will be built during uh, uh, today, which will be a process around monitoring key performances, key performance indicators. So the idea is that um, after we do all this detailed planning, we will need to, um, in, on a monthly basis, um, track and analyze the performance against targets of, of, of our plan. So basically, we will have a process where um, store managers can uh, see the, the current month versus target, year to date versus target. They will be able to comment and uh, review and the comments could be reviewed um, and that's it so this will be the last process that's not yet done but will be done during the, the next couple of uh, hours thank you and this is the five-step process <laughs>